याद कर नेक्स्ट कलमा सूफी कलमा कमांडमेंट्स दिस कम्स फ्रॉम टू वर्ड्स याद एंड कर इट इज ऑल्सो नोन एज एसेंशियल रिमेम्बरेंस we try to remember all that is superficial the human brain is composed of two aspects masculine and feminine it is not that only females have feminine mind even men have feminine feminine mind and masculine mind these are two aspects of the mind the very nature of the feminine mind is that it is very soft emotional and the masculine mind as it is indicated by its name it is masculine in its nature and approach feminine mind cannot forget the things that has it has experienced for instance a spouse can never forget if her spouse has done anything which has been not acceptable for instance along the marriage line if one of the spouse falters or betrays as the normal term will be the feminine mind can never forget that and whenever situation comes it will remind you again and again this is not essential remembrance what is essential remembrance is of a different nature i give you an indication of that an example it happened during the time of the mogul emperor akbar once there was a poor man and something had happened that he got the favors from the emperor he was made to join the army because of his sincerity and honesty he rose to a high status in the army he became to the level of a commando but it used to happen every day at a certain hour he will lock himself up into the room nobody knows what he does but these kings and emperors are most insecure people and the people who are jealous they are always ready to take advantage of the insecurity of the emperors and kings so these people told emperor that this man who you rose from rags to this high status every day he locks up himself into the room and probably he is conspiring against you so king was king became suspicious of it so he make a peep hole he got the peep hole made in the room of the person and when the man got into his room and locked the king came and washed into the room through the peep hole the man walked down to a cupboard he took out a old shattered bag he opened that he took out his clothes that he was wearing undress himself and the clothes that was in that bag the shabby rat old tattered clothes he put them on and he stood in front of the mirror he remained there for some time thereafter he changed into the regular clothes and put that shattered clothes back into the cupboard again as soon as the king saw this he darted into the room and inquired what is this are you conspiring against me or something the poor man held on to his hands and request and told him sir i am trying to remember my roza awal roza awal means the first day first day when i came in your company i was in these clothes shattered penniless and then your grace fell on me and i got inducted into the army and then because of your grace and that of allah subhanahu wa taala i rose to this status i do not want to forget my first day in your company 
This is called essential remembrance or Rose Awal. The remembrance of the Rose Awal when you came in the company of the Sheikh for the first time, what was your position? What was your inner state of the being? If and since then much water has flowed, lot of changes has taken place in your consciousness, your inner state. So a seeker must remember that the first day in the company of the Master. If one remembers that, there will be no possibility of any downfall or downfall in any way. This is known as essential remembrance of Yad or Yad Kar. Yad is the remembrance and remembrance is the English word for Zikr. And Kirk means essential, remembering all that is essential. Now the Sufis has given a method of remembering using the Zikr. There is two aspects of that, using the negation and affirmation together, the two aspects. The seeker must make Zikr by negation and affirmation on his tongue until he reaches the state of contemplation of his heart, that is Mara. That state will be achieved by reciting every day the spiritual negation. This Kalma La Ilaha Illallah Muhammadur Rasulallah is supposed to be chanted or remembered in a particular sequence. These are not mere words. Instead, these are the energies. These, just as in music, there is notes and each note has a particular pitch, a particular way of intonation. Unless and until we know that, we will not be able to feel the effect of these words. So it has to go La ilaha illallah. The first aspect La ilaha illallah, La ilaha is a spiritual negation and the affirmation is illallah. It has to be done on the tongue. It is said between 5,000 to 10,000 times. This will help in removing from his heart the elements that tarnish and rust it, that cause the unnecessary things to come to the heart. This zikr polishes the heart and takes the seeker into the state of manifestation. He must keep that zikr daily either by heart or by tongue repeating Allah the name of God's essence which encompasses all other names and attributes or by negation and affirmation through the saying of La ilaha illallah. Some it is also mentioned that the complete kalma is La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulallah. But Muhammadur Rasulallah happens on its own. You have to, for instance, if you have to go somewhere, you do not worry about putting on the perfume. Instead of taking a bath, you take out the perfume bottle from the bath and spray the perfume. Body has natural smell. Once you use the detergent, with that, all that is negative comes out. Then when it is washed, the natural essence of the body is there. So La Ilaha is a negation and affirmation both. This is the illuminative harmony of neg negative and positive energies. And when two forces, opposing forces merge Illumination is a reality, then naturally it happens, Muhammad Rasulullah. You have to begin with La ilaha illallah when you are using the zikr. Then Muhammad Rasulullah happens on its own when the two opposing forces merge into one another, the illuminated state comes. This zikr when it is performed daily, will bring the seeker into the perfect presence of the one who is glorified. 
The zikr by negation and affirmation is the manner of Nakshbandi masters. They demand that the seeker close his eyes, close his mouth, clench his teeth, glue his tongue to the roof of the mouth and hold his breath. Touching the roof of the mouth or inside the palate with the tongue also helps in creating a moisture in this. This was made essential because when the seekers are doing the zikr, they have to remain in that state for a longer period of time. They feel, they get distracted by thirst. So when you touch the inner part of the palate, the roof, with the tongue by rolling it, it maintains the moisture. And the yogis and the meditators when they are doing the intense austerities and there is, they are abstaining from water even, this helps to maintain the moisture in the throat as well as in the mouth. He must recite the zikr through the heart by negation and affirmation. Beginning with la means no, he lifts the snow from navel up to his brain. On reaching the brain, the word no brings out the word ilaha. Ilaha means God. Moves from brain, brain to the left shoulder. He hits the heart with illallah, accept the God. When the word hits the heart, its energy and heat spreads to all parts of the body. The seeker who has denied all that exists in this world with the word La ilaha affirms with the word illallah that all that exists has been annihilated in the divine. I repeat this. When you are sitting, you sit down, close your eyes, close your mouth, clench teeth, glue the tongue to the roof of the mouth inside and hold his breath. Then the word, you have to begin from negation to affirmation by using the word la means no. And as this word is uttered, he lifts his, this no from under his navel up to his brain. La. As if the breath is moving from the navel to the brain. And on reaching to the brain, the word no brings out the word la, la, la. And then he moves from the brain to the left shoulder and hits the heart or sarap goes on the heart or cult center with the sound illallah, except the God. When that word hits the heart, energy and heat spreads to all parts of the body. The seeker who has denied that denied all that exists in this world with the word la ilaha affirms with the word illallah that all that exists has been annihilated in the divine presence. The seeker repeats this with every breath inhaling and exhaling always making it come to the heart according to the number of times prescribed to him by his master. The seeker will eventually reach the state where one breath can repeat La ilaha illallah 23 times on one breath. A perfect master can repeat La ilaha illallah an infinite number of times in every breath. The meaning of this practice is that the only goal of Allah is that there is no other goal for us to look at the Divine Presence as we repeat La ilaha illallah an infinite number of times in every prayer. The meaning of this practice is that only the goal is Allah and all that is no other goal for us. To look at the Divine Presence as the only existence after all this throws back into the heart of the Murid the love of the Prophet and at the same time he says Muhammadur Rasulullah. Muhammad is the prophet of God.
and when it is said Muhammad is the prophet of God this is the heart of the divine presence thus completes the whole sutra or mantra or sikh la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah this is yaad kart or essential remembrance after this comes bas kasht